Welcome back to Sip the Tyler Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today is January 27th, Saturday, the day before the AFC Championship game. Now, we did a lot of film study this week, did a lot from the Ravens and Texans game, did a little preview of um, stopping the Kansas City run game. That video came out earlier this week. Um, I don't know if any more films coming out. Uh, depends on how froggy I feel today. But these are the few things that came across my desk, and I want to just share the four things that have, and not in the past 24 hours, in the past couple of days. So um, let's get into it. Welcome back. You're watching Sip the Tally Films. All right, first up, Chris Horton took the podium a couple days ago and was asked about the special teams mishaps from the Houston Texans game. Now, myself, uh, Hendo from the Road Pod, we always give Jordan Stout a hard time. And he had two back-to-back -back horrible punts. The punt before the kickoff return maybe netted 27 yards. Well, he shanked it pretty much. And then the kickoff return, the punt return, was kicked low and, you know, kind of gave the Texans an opportunity to return it. Uh, but Chris Horton was asked about this, and here's what he had to say about it. Well, you know, uh, one of the things is, uh, you know, everything we do obviously always starts with, you know, uh, giving guys punt direction. And I think when the ball when the ball didn't go where they expected it to go, I mean, pretty much all 11 guys at that point there was a, there was a breakdown, and uh, that ball got to uh, Sims pretty quickly, uh, and uh, he was able to just kind of hit us, split us right up the middle. Um, you know, it's just a it's just a combination of uh, everything going wrong at at the same time. Uh, you know, and those when those things happen on those plays, uh, you kind of just kind of go back and you, and you look and you ask and you say, hey man. We got we to defend this play better. Regardless of where that ball is, we need to make adjustments a lot quicker. Uh, and that's really what happened on that play. See, again, we all know that, that Stout had a rough day that day. Hopefully, we won't have those issues uh, tomorrow, and he'll get everything sorted out. But even with the bad punt, it still should have, like Horton said, it still should have been covered. Um, Sims basically caught the ball and just really kind of sat in place for a minute, let the blocking pan out, then hit him right up the seams, like Horton said. But... Hopefully they get it fixed and won't have those issues tomorrow. Uh, the second story is Mark Andrews is back. Um, Mark was activated from the IR. Jeremiah Moon was cut to make room for Mark. And it really sucks for Jeremiah Moon because I was excited about having him on the team for the future. But the still, Pittsburgh Steelers picked him up almost immediately. So that may be the end of Jeremiah Moon's time here in, in um, Baltimore. But Mark being back is, is huge whether he has a significant role or whether he's a decoy because you have to account for him. Now, I don't think he should have a like a, a major, major role. I think he should be eased in because of how good likely he's been playing and how good the offense has been flowing once you know things got started. But having him back on, on the, the squad is, I don't see any negative to that. Any negative to that because you immediately have to pay attention to him. Just like you have to pay attention to Kelsey and not saying he's as good as Kelsey, but just like you have to pay attention to him, you gotta pay attention to Mark. And if you you focusing on Mark, that leaves opportunities for other guys to eat, uh, whether it be Zay, whether it be Odell, whether it be uh, Nelson Aguilar, doesn't matter. Whoever it is, you gotta pay attention to him. Pay attention to Mark, so they can eat. Now uh, Lamar was asked about this. Here's what Lamar had to say about Mark being back. To the team. Uh, it means a lot to to all of us. Um, what it means to me is I, I got another security blanket. You know, I'm on the field, him, Likely, and the rest of the guys are uh, just ready to get after it right now. And also, here's a couple of quotes from Mark himself about being back on the team. Um, no, I, I think that, you know, mentally you got to stay on top of it. you got to be able to, you know, um, you know, get healthy in your head, get healthy with your body. It's, it's all in one. So for me, pushing myself every day, um, you know, believing that I was going to be able to come back and, um, it's easy to do when you have great teammates that every day you come in is just, just say that we're going to keep winning for you and we're going to keep winning and um, by the time you're back it's it's going to be go time. Um, yeah, you know, you, I, I feel like, you know, being out of the, the game for, for however many weeks it's been, it's um, I'm definitely internalizing everything, I'm thinking about it and um, I'm excited. You know, I can't tell you how excited. This is what I love to do. I love to play football. I love the Ravens. I love this city. Um, they're going to give, I'm going to give them everything I got. Third thing I saw. Mina Kimes talked about Mike McDonald being a good fit in Seattle. Before I give my take on it, let's just hear what Mina had to say. 
I would like to see them hire the Ravens defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald. The biggest Stud. failure of Stud. the Seahawks team yeah. in recent years has been their inability to shop, stop these Shanahan offenses. They've sliced and diced them, despite the fact that the Seahawks have invested draft capital and used trades to try to address the defense, and it hasn't gotten better. This season, the Dolphins, the Niners, and the Texans, all of whom are you know part of that tree, all put up uh, the bottom three performances on the season versus the Ravens. The Rams did better, but Matthew Stafford blacked out in that game, so I'm attributing Black that to out. that mostly. <laughs> uh, if I'm Seattle and I got to play Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay twice a year, I want the guy who I believe can stop them. I, mm. I think it would be a tremendous hire. Now, now Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen aren't coming with him, so they have some personnel issues Patrick to address, Hickman. no doubt. I want to be clear. But I think it makes a lot of sense given their competition and where they've struggled. I will now, I respect Mina's opinion to the utmost. Like, she's one of the people I, I listen to and I like, yep, mm-hmm, good point. And, you know, I just, I really respect it. Like, she comes with a sensible football knowledge and not just spewing stuff like some of the other people on TV. But um, what she said makes perfect sense. You take the guy, because in your division, you got San Francisco, see, I mean, San Francisco, Seattle, the Rams, and the Cardinals. The two main cogs in that in that um, division is, or in that conf in, in that division is the Rams and San Francisco. Mike McDonald be both of them, and everybody loves pulling somebody from the Shanahan tree. Why not get a guy that has known to beat the Shanahan's, so to speak? And I mean the last name Shanahan, the whole tree. So just think about it. He went through the gauntlet of it, and then she called him off. Mike McDonald at the Dolphins, Shanahan himself. Um, the Rams. Now, he probably should have lost to the Rams, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> and um, he took on the big three of that coaching tree and be, and Sloak. Sloak from the, the Texans is part of that tree also. So she makes a lot of sense with that with that statement. And um, you see kind of why I messes with, with Mina Kimes. And lastly, is Lamar Jackson already a Hall of Famer? Chris Broussard and Rob Parker um, on the Odd Couple, they talked about this. And Rob Parker laid out some some things, if happen, if they fall right, that could make Lamar Jackson an MVP, I mean, it's not MVP, a Hall of Fame candidate or lock in or shoe in already if they fall in place. Let's hear what Rob had to say. All right. Well, um, he certainly is a Hall of Famer. Uh, and, and the question, though, and it we're really not a question, Rob, we would both say Lamar Jackson's a Hall of Famer, too. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I I do. If you went to, if you do something that nobody else has ever done, and that's what he is on the verge of doing when he wins another if he's MVP. Unanimous, yeah. You know, I'm and and two before what is it, twenty seven or two oh, at twenty seven? The youngest, he would be yeah. the youngest by the like young, nine I mean, months. The pack yeah, months. but you see what I'm saying? Like like, there's a couple of things that you start to look at when you look at the NFL and the history of it and. Who did this and who did that? And it's those kind of things that, that separate you. Obviously, if he wins a Super Bowl two or another one, Chris, or three, then you're talking about, you know, all-time great. Now, I don't know whether you agree with Rob or not. I do. You know, drop, drop a like on this video if you, agree, if you agree what Rob had to say about Lamar Jackson. I do agree. I do agree. And if those things fall in place, I'd be extremely excited. But if he was to get unanimous for the second time and go on to win the Super Bowl, I think you can go ahead and start sizing for a gold jacket. No matter what the rest of his career is like. <laughs> Two unanimous MVPs and a Super Bowl. And don't mess around and let him get a, you know, another one. You can, you can almost lock him in for Canton whenever his playing day is over with. And I didn't put it in there, but they talked about how Eli's probably going to get into the Hall of Fame too. And basically said... Without those postseason runs, Eli's a 500 quarterback. So if Eli can get in with being a 500 quarterback, Lamar can, can already have his resume written if he does the things that uh, Rob, Rob Parker laid out in his video. So that's all I got for you today. We're on the eve of the AFC Championship game. Baltimore Ravens versus Kansas City Chiefs in Baltimore. Star-studded lineup. For those of you that are going to the game, man, I... I kind of wish I may have had plans for that because the lineup that you guys are going to get is awesome. And if you don't know the lineup, I'll give it to you. Uh, legends of the game, Ray Lewis, Ed Reed. 
Uh, honorary captain, Jonathan Ogden. Michael Phelps delivering the football. Um, big, I mean, not big boy, T-Pain at halftime. Shaq is DJing some event in Baltimore area. See, this probably lit it right now. Or the rest of the day. <laughs> probably not right now, but the rest of the day. So um, I appreciate you guys for coming through. Uh, if you like what you saw, like the video. If you're not subscribed, please do so and hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of these videos drop. And if you really like the content and you want to help us grow, we're on the road to 10K, please grab a link to this video, share it on your socials, share it in the group chats, share it on your Reddit. And um, I just want to say thank you for doing that. Any little help hurt, helps, any little bit help helps. So <laughs> that's all I got for you, man. Peace and love. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday and try to get some sleep tonight because tomorrow's a big day.